You've probably done trust exercises before, whether in an official context, such as doing trust falls as part of a team building event, or in a less formal context, such as asking your best friend whether you have anything stuck in your teeth before going on your big date. But did you know there are trust exercises you can do with your dog? In this video, we're going to be looking at the four simple tests you can use to tell how much your dog actually trusts you. But before we dive in, why not subscribe to our channel and join our doggy loving community for more videos about how to care for your doggo. While you're at it, ring the notification bell to get instant updates whenever we post new content. Number 1. Hold their head. One of the least intrusive ways to find out if your pup trusts you is to gently cup their muzzle in your two hands. If your dog doesn't fully trust you yet, they'll likely back away when you start reaching for their face. If you have their trust, however, then not only will they let you hold them, but they'll probably even enjoy it. Especially if you sweeten the deal by gently brushing one of your fingers against their cheek or scratching them behind the ears. You might even find that your furry friend starts butting their head into your hands at cuddle time. What if it didn't work? Well, trusting a human might be a big ask from a dog if you're not one of their closest. We're apex predators, we're much larger than them, and we often behave in ways that they don't understand. Predators in the wild often target these areas, heads and necks, so dogs are naturally skittish about anything coming directly at their face. You also have to consider the mood your dog is in. How would you react if somebody, even somebody you trusted completely, reached out and started grabbing at your face? Maybe if you were relaxing or playing together, you'd be all right. But if you were working or busy doing something else, maybe you'd be a little less tolerant. The same is true for your dog. Although it may seem your dog is just lazing around between walks, your fur baby actually spends a lot of time monitoring their territory and looking out for interesting smells or potential threats. With all these tests, it's good to make sure your dog isn't absorbed in some other activity before trying them out. Even if your pup fully trusts you, they might not put up with your nonsense if they've got other stuff to do. Number 2. Rub their belly. Ever enter a room and see your dog immediately flop over onto their back or side, revealing their soft, fluffy belly? You might think they're asking for a tummy rub, but as many a dog parent has learned to their cost, that's not always the case. Though they seem laid back, most pups will react badly to having someone unexpectedly try to touch their tummy. Rolling over is their way of letting you know that they trust you not to attack them when they reveal the most vulnerable part of their body. But that doesn't always mean you have their full and unequivocal trust. In fact, moving your hand towards them can be taken as exactly such a breach. However, if your dog truly trusts you, then they will happily accept and even enjoy a hearty tummy rub. The trick is to wait for a moment when your dog is feeling relaxed, but not playful, and moving your hand slowly and gently. Whatever you do, don't make any rapid movements. Once you've got your hand on their belly, start off by stroking it gently, moving your hand with the grain of your pup's fur. If they seem to enjoy it, you can later move on to a more vigorous tummy rub. Either due to their independent nature or because of past experiences, some doggos may never be truly comfortable with belly rubs. Because humans walk upright and therefore have our torsos facing outward the majority of the time, it can be easy to forget that for animals that walk on four legs, the only time their belly is exposed is when they are off their feet and therefore an easy target for attack. In fights, dogs will often target the underside of the other dog, as this is where the vital organs are. This means that having their tummy touched is not only an extremely vulnerable experience, it's also an unfamiliar one. Your dog swatting you away might be a sign that they don't trust you, but it could just as easily mean that they're uncomfortable with the sensation of hands on their tummy because they're not used to being touched there. Number 3. Boop Boop touch their nose. Dogs are very smell-oriented creatures and will often greet each other by booping noses to exchange scents. Generally, this involves nose-to-nose -nose contact, but most dogs will find nose-to-finger acceptable enough. The trick to booping your pup's adorable nose is to be gentle and slow. Going too hard risks not only upsetting your furry friend, but potentially even hurting them. 
Dogs' noses are very sensitive to touch, so it's important to be careful with them. Contact should be short, but sweet. Most pups won't appreciate having their noses rubbed or touched for any length of time. What if it didn't work? Tolerance for nose boops may vary from dog to dog. Some will have more sensitive noses than others. If your dog flinches back when you approach or turns their head away from you, be sure and back off. Forcing it on your dog won't make them trust you more and might make them more skittish around you. Other dogs may be tolerant of boops in theory, but in practice don't have the patience to let you get away with that for a long time. If they show irritation at your delicate human finger hovering in front of their tender nose, booper, beware. Number 4. Grab their tail. The first thing most of us learn about dogs when we encounter them as kids is, don't pull that tail. Even the calmest doggo will likely feel pushed to lash out at you if they feel you pulling on their tail. But this means that letting you hold their tail in your hand, so long as you are gentle and don't squeeze or pull, is one of the purest signs of trust a dog can show. Because their tail is behind them, your pup can't easily fight you off once you've got a grip. As such, letting you get that close in the first place is a sign that they know you well enough to know that you won't take advantage of the situation. What if it didn't work? First of all, you need to remember that your dog's tail is a very sensitive body part. It's connected directly to the spinal cord and a hard tug can cause serious injury. Tail pull injury, for example, is a severe neurological condition that can develop in some dogs after having their tails pulled. It's caused by damage to the nerves that stretch from the base of the tail and can lead to your dog having lifelong issues with incontinence, as many of those nerves also control the rectum and bladder. Your dog safeguards their tail for a reason. The tail is also an obvious and easy target for predators, enemy dogs, or malicious humans who want to halt a fleeing puppy. We recommend not even attempting this test with dogs who may have survived past abuse, as the risk of causing distress is too high. There are a couple of other reasons, however, aside from trust, that can cause your dog to object to having their tail held. The tail isn't just a convenient handle for your pup, it's a useful tool for communication. If your dog wanted to use their tail to communicate something, then they may object to having it held down. The risk of tail pull injury also means that even if you aren't pulling their tail, just holding it in your hand may make it too much of a risk for your dog to get up and move away if they want to. If your doggo isn't the type to appreciate being restrained, then they may not like having their tail held at all. Now you know how much your dog trusts you, why not find out how much you can trust them? Check out this video to find out what 12 secrets your furry pal knows about you.